there's um, young and old. Um, as you said, young, who's not necessarily a veteran, but he's been around. Um, we also have Nathan Ake from the Premier League. You know, Babel, who's played in the Premier League, Depay, Blind. And yeah, um, I would say following last night's result, definitely a, definitely a bit of excitement now, for sure. I'm happy with Ronald Koeman, who's got a lot to prove following his um, departure from Everton last season. Yeah, no, definitely. I think there's been a huge improvement given the fact that Danny Blind, as I mentioned, uh, failed to qualify for Euro 2016, as well as did Advocat, disappointingly not taking the Dutch into Russia 2018. Uh, that was pretty much a, 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 a bit of a shock appointment given the fact that as uh, his third spell in charge of the Dutch team and um, given his unsuccessful term with Serbia as manager, failing to get them into Euro 2016. Uh, Sunderland as well, he didn't do very well, if I'm not mistaken. He might have got them relegated, I can't remember now. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't been very good. Um, the favourites such as Robin, uh, Robin Van Persie, Wesley Schneider, Nigel de Jong, I think it's been a good thing that they have actually been removed from the national team. Um, and I, mean, I don't know if you've watched much of uh, De Ligt, the centre-back, but he definitely looks like a, a future captain, not only for Ajax, but uh, for Holland. Oh yeah, uh, most definitely he is. He is for Ajax. He's definitely one of our most prized, prized possessions. Who unfortunately will be under the watchful eyes of uh, the European giants. Obviously, we hear Man City, um, Barcelona. Um, I wouldn't say Arsenal as yet, but apparently, um, their friends from North London across the road are also interested. So yeah, he's definitely um turning heads. Um, that said, um, also just a word about the, the older heads. I mean, um, they did they did their best. Players like Robin, very unfortunate to not win win um, anything um, well significant for for the Dutch. Um, Schneider, fan favorite, but at the same time, um, obviously change is good. Um, Germany, um, similar nations had um, similar revolutions, and you know it's it's always good to bring in new blood, and it's the perfect time for the Dutch. To be fair. Um, obviously, um, with uh, even Justin Clavert, for example. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, a few other players. They've got players. They've actually got some younger players coming through. Um, the ideal balance would be for them to flourish in some of their local club sides and also, obviously, abroad. So, I guess it's only for the best that these European giants are looking at players like the Licks. And, um, yeah, even Nathan Ake, I hear, is linked to United and other teams. Um, in the Premier League potentially, so yes, it's an exciting time for the Dutch players. I think one of the one of the main things that I've noticed about the Dutch team, especially, and I'm I'm only taking this uh, since their failure to qualify for the World Cup. So I'm looking at results since the start of June. So they had their friendly with Italy, they drew one one with them. Nathan Ackley, Nathan Aki, as you mentioned there, uh, scoring in the 88th minute. Uh, they also played Peru, which they won two one. Depay in the 83rd minute. Um, they came three 0 winners significantly in the UEFA Nations League. Uh, against Germany, with goals from Depay in the 86th and Wijnaldum in the 90th minute. And again, a penalty yesterday in the 19th minute. They seem like a team that don't want to give up. Uh, they, they they fight till the end. A lot of the goals, as I've just mentioned, have come in the last 10 minutes. And uh, a change of fortune for Memphis Depay. Uh, not a very successful uh, time during uh, his, his stint at Manchester United. And he seems to be revitalised in the French League. Have you, have you seen much of him uh, playing in the French League this season? Um, to be fair, I'll be honest, I haven't seen as much as in 90-minute games. Um, obviously, whenever he, he lights up a game, it tends to get broadcasted a lot here. So, we do see the clips. Um, but yeah, he's doing he's doing amazing, the pie that is. Um, he has a lot to prove. And I think that's the, the most interesting thing about the Dutch national team in terms of individuals or even the coach. They have, most of them have had like a interesting few months or few years and most, some of them do um, have things to prove. For example, even the coach, I mean, he came into Everton with a big reputation. Yeah. It was presumed to, yeah, or assumed that, you know, he, he I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, he said in his press conference, his first press conference, that he had his eyes on being Barcelona manager or something, something, something along that, those lines. So, you know, he came in with a big reputation and unfortunately... He left. He left with that reputation in tatters to a degree. So you know he's had to be humble and come back here. It's the perfect time for him to get the job. Um, players like I would even say Ryan Babel, who perhaps did not hit the heights as as expected. Um, the pie at United certainly did hit the heights. So it's a combination of players who who have got a lot to prove. Van Dijk being the most expensive centre back in the world. 
you know, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting mix of players and the coach. Um, and I think, obviously, you by that, by the fact they have things so much to prove and the spotlight's been on them, um, they seem to be um, churning out results and long may that continue. Um, ideally, to qualify for the next major tournament would be a sign of perfect of progress, so to speak. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Babel because we, we've known each other a long time and uh, I remember when Babel was first breaking through, you were, you were pretty impressed by him and there was a lot of rumour uh, rumor and talk at the time that Arsenal were very interested in him and Arsene Wenger, I think, even mentioned him a couple of times. Um, I think it's very good to see that he's back. He's been very effective, not necessarily uh, his young, sprightly self as he was a few years back, obviously, but a good comeback and uh, an important player for the Dutch team. Uh, yes, uh, no, most definitely. Um, I remember we, um, I think believe we saw him in a, I think it was an under nineteen or under twenty one. Mm, yes, um, tournament in Sweden. And, yeah, I think he was it was. Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, Royston uh, Royston Drenthe was part of that team as well. I believe. That, yes, Royston. <laughs> <Drenthe>. <laughs> Good times. So, exactly, Ryan Babel, perfect example. I mean, this was someone who was compared to the great Thierry Henry and. Um, and rightfully so at the time. It's just, I know disrespect to Liverpool, but at the time, it, it perhaps wasn't the best move for him. A few strikers did move there and didn't necessarily cut it like they perhaps should have. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, if it was partially uh, the club's fault or the players' fault, but all I know is he unfortunately did not hit the heights. So it's interesting to see a player like that um, have a renaissance at um, international level. Um, yeah, it's an interesting time with Depay, especially. I mean, I even believe, um, even though he left United after a season, they still have a buyback clause. I mean, that's how highly he's been rated. So there are there are Dutch players that do have the potential. It's just a shame that they haven't really been able to replicate the players of um, Bergkamp or Seedorf's ilk. But perhaps you know these things come in cycles. Um, we're looking at Germany right now, and they seem to be in decline. So. I guess these things come in cycles and hopefully it's the Dutch turn to, you know, um, have a resurgence on the international scene. Yeah, I mean, the UEFA Nations League is obviously a new tournament. Uh, some people say an overhyped, friendly tournament. But the, the games so far have been quite competitive. In particular, that Dutch, uh, that Netherlands 3 Germany nil game uh, was quite competitive. And given that Germany's fortunes have changed slightly, it is quite strange to see how they have declined uh, since that 2014 World Cup win. Uh, Joe Chimlo is still the manager of the team. He was, I believe, he's still offered another contract. Uh, he's still the manager there, and um, his magic may be waning. Um, recently, uh, especially this year, given the results since the World Cup, if we just bring up the uh, World Cup results here, um, you can see that since the game against Mexico, Germany have struggled. Uh, six competitive matches, three goals scored, nine conceded. Um, quite disappointing, really, that given that they've lost two matches at the World Cup. Uh, Straight out one 0 win. Sorry, one 0 defeat uh, to Mexico in the first game of that World Cup. They obviously got the 90th minute winner against Sweden, giving them some hope uh, to qualify into the knockout stage. But then the final game against the Korean Republic, uh, they were they were they were they were um, they were done with two goals in the 90th minute. Very surprising result. One of the shock results really of the World Cup. On the first time they didn't uh, qualify for the knockout stage of the World Cup since yeah, 1938. So sorry. Sorry, we love that over here, by the way, just so you know. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite funny that, that given that the, the Dutch and the Germans are traditional rivals, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, that they seem to be, the tables have turned slightly. I mean, obviously, it's early days, Holland are looking very good, but they have got a very young team that are progressing very well, whereas Germany uh, seem to be stagnating, stagnating a little bit. They, um, they got, obviously got the 3-0 win on Thursday to Russia in a friendly uh, but uh, because of the result yesterday of the Netherlands over France, uh, again, because the Nations League is so is so new, it's kind of hard to determine how serious people are taking this. But Germany have actually been relegated from uh, from that group into uh, League B. So uh, it is interesting to see how, how they will react. Now, given uh, the results recently haven't been very good and uh, the issue with Meza Ozil and, uh, you know, the problems with the FA and his... Pre, he's, um, his early retirement, let's say, from the German team, he has a lot to offer them still. Uh, as an Arsenal fan, do you think he was he did the right thing by, by leaving the German team? I mean, he, he was citing, um, he was treated unfairly, what he thought, by the German FA. Do you think it's affected him? Yeah, I 
yeah, I, I, I have mixed feelings. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, unlike some Arsenal fans, I I've always been a Nozil fan. Um, regardless, like I I have loved him since he played for Vader. Um, he's an amazing, amazing player. Um, I I still love international football. Um, I love international football a lot. I I take a lot of pride in. It, well, I think players should take a lot of pride in representing their nation. So, for me, it was a bit of a touchy su- subject. Um, I believe he's co- he's a committed player, despite his you know laid back laid back approach or attitude. So, for him to really go to those lengths of retiring from international football, and as you said, at an age where he perhaps does have a lot more to offer, despite being thirty, if you look at his um, accolades in terms of being forward, I believe um, German Player of the Year five times. Um, well, yeah. Over the- I don't know, six years or so. So, yeah, it's just, I would think perhaps there's a lot more behind the scenes we're not aware of. And it has played a role. And for Ozil to take such a decision, he perhaps did think it through. Um, it has affected Germany adversely. Um, that's that's for sure. I think that the, they are the victims of their own success. Um, unfortunately, when you do have players who are winning things at club level and the World Cup like they did... Um, I believe, was it 2014, I believe, in Brazil? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, after that, you can't, I can't, well, I can't name a uh, replacement 11 under the age of perhaps 28 that could step in for those um, players that have been winning things. And unfortunately, that's when things go south because, you know, you've got all these players, just like we had Schneider and we had Robin and all these household names, Van Persie. But the, at the end of the day, the game moves on very quickly. Two years in the game is a long time in international football, especially when you have these um, money-powered um, European leagues that, you know, week in, week out, they perform at the highest level. So a lot changes, a lot changes. And Germany are just unfortunately, well, <laughs> unfortunately for them going through this phase. And yeah, if you, your Kim Lowe is the right man, I can't really say. I think he's also gone stale to a degree. He seems to be a embodiment of what Germany are as a national team right now. So they look good on paper, but there's not not too much beneath the surface, as you saw how um, you know South Korea put them to the sword. So yeah, yeah it's an interesting time. But um, as far as I'm concerned, my loyalties lie with um, on the European note. Uh, <laughs> I'll say first. <laughs> um, obviously, I always keep an eye out for the three lions. You know, obviously, um, and then. Well, obviously, overall, Nigeria, who who did qualify for the African Cup of Nations today, by the way. So, yeah. Excellent. That's good news. Very good news. When is the, when is the African Nations, by, by, by chance? Um, if I'm not mistaken, it will be in a few weeks in January, I believe. Ah, OK. Right. Well, congratulations, Nigeria, on a qualifying for the African Nations. But, I mean, you are right. That, that, a lot has changed. I mean, if we take, if we take a look back at uh, summer 2017... Uh, Germany, I think they won the Confederations Cup with a practically reserve team, and they do have young players, players like Kimmich, Sane, uh, Timo Werner, you know, great players in the league, in the Bundesliga, but for some reason, it just recently doesn't seem to be happening for them, and um, maybe you're right, maybe it is a case of the um, the Arsene Wenger's with Joe Chimlow, he has been there for quite a while now, and uh, maybe it's starting to go a bit stale, but um, we wait and see what happens uh, with Germany. Now, uh, finally, before we wrap up the show, I wanted to have a quick word uh, about Wayne Rooney and his farewell game. There was a lot of controversy uh, regarding his uh, his return to the England setup. Uh, first time he's actually played for the England team uh, for two years. So it wasn't a, a natural progression of whereby he was part of the team and then, you know, he decided to play his last game. Um, it was seen as a farewell game. Uh, other players, high, high profile players such as Lucas Podolski had a similar um, end of international career game. And um, much focus was made on Rooney uh, playing in the match and actually raising money for charity. So, given it was a friendly, um, do, do you think the, the farewell game was a success? And uh, what are your opinions on um, on farewell matches? Lou? Um Okay, well, as, as earlier stated, I am an international football fan. I believe that's where loyalty should lie. Um, and to a degree, I do. I, I am a fan of internet. Oh, sorry, of farewell games. I do have time for them. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, they are blown out of proportion, or you know, it's a, it becomes a bit of a fanfare as opposed to you know just just a game. So you know, it's a chance to say to show your respects to players who have served their national team. Um, with Rooney, I I have mixed feelings. Um, I believe 
he's been an amazing player for England and for Manchester United. I personally don't believe he's got the respect he deserves as a football player, um, especially in England. Um, yeah. You can only imagine. Um, I, I know he left he left at a late age to go to the United States, but the truth is he's playing. He's still playing a, amazing. Um, he could still do a job for England now, in my personal opinion. Um, I believe, unfortunately, in England, we have this culture of chop and change too quick. Um, Rooney is perhaps an example of that and, and a, 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 I'd just say, a victim of that culture because he he blew up, um, unfortunately, scoring a stunner against my beloved Arsenal left. Um, and immediately after that, he was the next big thing. And you only have to look back and realise that there's a train of players who have the same progression. I could go through nearly every player from um, Dele Alli to perhaps Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain to Sterling. Once they have this little burst on the scene, that's it. The international team, there's no progression. And unfortunately, they're not cherished enough or their career is not nurtured enough as they go along. Rooney never really had time to settle for England. I believe he broke his metatarsal at 18, um, you know, playing his heart out for a Euro 2000 side that he was spearheading. And you're thinking at that age, it's a lot of pressure. Um, so he never really had time to pause. And, you know, here we are now, how many years later, he's the top scorer, record scorer. And there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of arms up in the air about him, him even returning. And I'm thinking... This is a this is a with all due respect, I believe a legend yeah. in his own right mm-hmm. under the age of thirty five. You know, it's it's, uh, it's unbelievable a player like that. You know, so um, I do believe we need to nurture our players a bit more. Um, look at Jaden Sancho, for example. With all due respect to the kid, I don't believe he should have the hype he has now. Not that he's not worthy of the of the praise, but he he doesn't deserve the pressure. So, you know, um, there's a lot of chopping and changing um, players being recalled at, at certain stages of their careers where you're thinking, should they be playing? Why didn't they get more play time? Players like Michael Carrick, for example. You know, it's just, um, it's weird. But you know, all in all, I'm happy for Wayne Rooney. Um, whether or not he gets the credit he deserves. As an Arsenal fan, I believe he's, he's an absolute legend of the game. He's done, he's done a lot for football in terms of, you know, um, the records he's broken. And at the age he started playing, he's played at a high level. And I still think he's way better than most of the players now. I mean, Harry Kane perhaps is the only um, exception to the rule. He actually bided his time and got into the England squad, or, you know, off his, off, off his own back. And, you know, perhaps he can carry the weight he carries now. Um, I, that, even in that sense, I don't even believe he should be captain because, you know, he doesn't need the pressure. But that's what we do. You know, we have a player and we just pile the pressure till they burn out. But... You know, regardless of what, however you view Wayne Rooney, I still believe he's a star. Regardless, so yeah. No, I think you're right. Um, I think you're right. There's, there's, there's a. I think there's a problem with, uh, with English football in, the, in that the, uh, as soon as a player hits thirty, they're automatically seen as old. Now, if you look mm. at other countries such as, uh, Spain or, um, or, or Italy, when they have Pirlo or Hierro or, or Casillas, like they played well into their, well into their thirties, and they're still important players to the team. Especially someone like uh, Andrea Pirlo. I mean, he. I'm pretty sure he played up till he was like 36, and he yes, he was a f- fantastic player. And you're right. Uh, I don't know if he actually watched the game uh, against the USA, but when Rooney did come on, he he was very good. I mean, you could see at the end he he seemed very sweaty and very tired. Uh, but um, he you know the flicks and not even the tricks, just efficient play and the passing and and his touch and and even though he has gone to the MLS, he's he's scoring some great goals and and he's playing very well. And um, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think I think. England, England in particular, are very quick to dismiss, especially their best players. And, and you're right, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. Record goal scorer for England, you know, the first one to do that in over 40 decades, sorry, 40 decades, four decades. Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, record scorer for Manchester United. So this argument that Rooney doesn't score many goals, I don't know where that comes from. He's a, a great goal scorer, scores many goals, not only for club and country, um, but, um, you know, he's, he's very well respected worldwide. And I don't think... I don't think people really understand that. Now, looking at the uh, the game after the match, sorry, um, there was stuff on social media which uh, congratulating Rooney for his performances. Um, I've got here, J- uh, Jaden Sancho tweeted out, emotional evening tonight with my uh, making my full England debut at Wembley. I'm playing in front of the family. Let me just get that up there. Um, good to get an assist and uh, see off Wayne Rooney with a win. 
true legend. Uh, we've also got a tweet here from uh, Callum Wilson, who, I mean, again, good player, but I think you're right. We, the, Rooney, Rooney's probably better and more efficient player than him. Uh, tweeting up, dream debut, what a feeling to score at Wembley tonight. Also, congratulations to Wayne Rooney on an amazing international career. Legend. Um, uh, we've, got, we've got Kyle Walker here. It's been an honour to play with such an incredible player, both on and off the pitch. Wayne Rooney has been a leader and an example to all. Thank you for the memories, Waza. And finally, uh, Jesse Lingard uh, tweeting out quite uh, poignantly, thank you for everything, Wayne Rooney, and a uh, little heart emoji. So he's very well respected, especially amongst the players. I think uh, I don't think that was a bad idea. It was a bit strange that they brought him back after two years to have this farewell game. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think we're very quick to dismiss uh, legendary players like that. Um, well, we've come to the end of the show. Uh, thank you uh, if you've been watching the video and if you've been watching the live stream. I want to say a particularly big thank you to uh, Lei Petrelli for coming onto the show and uh, taking part in our discussion today. Thank you so much, Lei. Thank you for having me. Um, excellent show as always. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> no it. No worries. And uh, we hope to see you again soon, maybe even uh, using Skype so we can see your lovely face. Um, <laughs> that's Soccer Sanchez TV. Thank you very much for watching the video. As I mentioned before, like, subscribe, follow and comment. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Soccer underscore Sanchez. On Instagram, it's Soccer.Sanchez. And uh, on YouTube and on Twitch, just search for Soccer Sanchez TV, all one word. And uh, you'll get past videos as well as uh, updates on the uh, live coming streams. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been emotional. Uh, see you soon uh, next Saturday and uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>